how can a captivating narrative impact us beyond entertainment? Well, I'm about to find out here at the World Government Summit, where hundreds of visitors are flocking in to attend a session called The Craft of Storytelling, hosted by world-renowned filmmaker Jeffrey Katzenberg, as well as Hollywood actor and UN Goodwill Ambassador Idris Elba. Hello, everyone. How are you? Look at all those smiley faces. Yeah. They're so happy to be here at 9 a.m. in the morning. Okay, um, just to get us started here, uh, Idris Elba is globally known for his extraordinary Emmy and Golden Globe uh, performances in the classic series The Wire and Luther. His remarkable and diverse movie career, uh, spanning everything from playing leading roles in both the Marvel and DC universe. Very few people actually get to live in both of those universes. Um, and um, amazing uh, performances, one of my favorite in uh, uh, Beast of No Nation. And recently, um, uh, Oscar Academy Award nominated. Want to maybe tell the audience just a little bit about that? Well, I just... Um, a movie that I... A, sm a short movie called The Boy the fox, the horse, and the mole. It's an animation. I play the fox in it, and it got nominated for an Oscar. It's my first time um, being in a film being nominated. Thank you. It's very exciting. So combined, uh, this is a tragic uh, statistic I'll give you. Combined, the two of us have spent 80 years uh, in the uh, business. I think mine's 60, he's 20, because he <laughs> looks so young. Um, and, uh, you know, me as a studio executive um, and uh, uh, Idris as a actor, producer, and a musician. But as we're going to touch on today, storytelling isn't just about the performance arts. It's, an, it's essential to all successful enterprises, including government. Um, and the value and impact um, of great storytelling is measured in so many different ways. So we're going to spend the next 20 minutes sharing some of the lessons that we've learned um, and how can storytelling impact culture, business, and government. We speak to audiences through uh, our films and our TV. You speak to uh, people around the world, uh, to your citizens, to um, uh, of your country. Uh, to culture, and uh, very much in the case of our host uh, here in Dubai, uh, through their leading industry, tourism, and you think how essential great storytelling is uh, to the tourism industry. So to get us started, um, let's talk about some of the ways um, you know that you think about storytelling, and both as a businessman, but also as an artist and a creator. Yeah, so thank you. I'm, I'm really pleased to uh, be here at the summit. And, you know, usually in these events, I feel an, a sense of imposter syndrome. Uh, I feel like I shouldn't be here. The esteemed audience probably have so much more sort of academia and have the sort of right presence for this type of forum. However, I think what we're realizing more and more is the power of the creative arts. And to Jeff's point, storytelling, how important that is. As an actor, I'm here because of my performances, uh, not because I sit in government, but because when you give a good performance, people believe you, people think you are the character that you portray, and that's because of the depth and complexity we, the film industry, go to making the audience believe that. That is a very primitive, um, experience for human beings. When a man sits underneath a tree and tells children a story, those children believe him. They listen to him. When you add fact, that man becomes a teacher and that teacher becomes the lessons for the kids. It's quite primitive. We all sort of adhere to that. And that's why my single goal, just to be clear, why I'm here really and truly is because you know, I want to see um, some real policy living for the creative arts. The countries that have adopted creative arts as, a, a, as, a, as an industry and taking it seriously, America, England, China, 
um, have seen incredible uh, power from the creative industry. So it's important that that's where you understand why I'm here. I'm very keen um, to try and allow people to understand the, 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 the power of storytelling. As I said, as an actor, I'm here because of that. Um, in business, you know, it is a generator not only of wealth, but of jobs. And it's a almost a future-proofing industry. So talk a little bit from your standpoint of the role that government can, should, needs to play in terms of supporting the creative arts. Why, what can they do and why is that important from your standpoint? Well, you know, I, I spent a lot of time in Africa. Um, I, I've made over seven, eight films in Africa and I want to make more. I want to make more because I believe that Africa, especially as a continent, needs to hold a narrative, change a narrative. The way I think the world has viewed Africa for a very long time needs a shift. How do we do that? Well, the media doesn't help. The media concentrates on conflict, okay? But the media is also a storyteller. Government in Africa could really help the continent by operating policy to allow the young people to be bolstered into an industry. So let me give you uh, maybe an example. So uh, uh, I have a couple of great examples where uh, our industry as storytellers have had actually a tremendous impact beyond the entertainment value of what we do. So I want to share with you just one big example and one that I just encountered literally a week ago. Uh, so in 1984, 83, 84, uh, I'm sorry, 93, 94, um, there, were, there were two movies that came out, sorry. One in 1984 was called Out of Africa, which was a tremendous, tremendous success. It was just a beautiful, very romantic capture of uh, uh, Africa and the beauty of Africa. I made a movie in 1994 called The Lion King, and those two movies literally were the catalyst for the tourism industry in Africa, which is now, as you know today, is literally one of the most you know, leading uh, economic drivers on the continent. And what happened is, is just through our stories and our storytelling and the romanticizing and the visuals around it was a, a lighthouse that brought people there to see something that they actually experienced through our movies. Two weeks ago, I was interviewing at a conference uh, uh, Dr. David uh, Sinclair. He's a leading um, a doctor on aging and uh, uh, longevity at Harvard University. Um, and he had just written a, a very uh, important book that's come out about uh, ex how to extend life in this. And in his book, he talks about the moment that he decided to pursue his career. It was after he had seen a movie that my uh, studio had made called Dead Poet Society with Robin Williams. And if any of you remember the movie, there's this very, very famous scene in which he tells these boys, carpe diem, seize the day. And literally the doctor who I had not met before this moment, when he saw that movie and saw that scene, it was the inciting moment that he said, this is what I want to do, this is what I'm going to do with my career. And that movie was a catalyst in that scene for him. So the power of movies and, and storytelling is more than just entertainment, it's more than good business. It actually can celebrate the cultures of your country, yeah. the values of your country. They are it, in their success, they are ambassadors that go out to the rest of the world and celebrate all of the things that are wonderful uh, about uh, each of your, of your countries. So to look at this as a, through the lens of it's not just good business, it is. It's actually great business, which it is. It is. It also unlocks many, many countries uh, with a high youthful population face unemployment in record-breaking uh, numbers and the creative arts sector 
offers so many types of jobs. I think people misconstrued creative arts as only creative, but you can be in tech, you can be in health, you can be in fitness, you can be in policy inside the one industry. It's like one of these industries that has many tentacles that can, you know, offer young people, especially those who want to tell their story, they want to uh, be seen. The creative industry has so many opportunities to sort of offer employment opportunities uh, uh, for, for a country. That's why I think government should look at policy. Also, not to mention, you know, Dubai is an incredible um, story. It's an incredible tourism story. But the power of the media, the power of them, the narrative of this is Dubai, come and check it out, has been the one that's like incredible. I think Dubai should win an Oscar because the movie is incredible. <laughs> I'm serious. It's a very, very good job, and other countries should take note. Um, so maybe if you, what would be advice? What would be, if we could be tactical here in terms of, so you have so many leaders and ministers here in the room today from the region. Um, what, what would be some specific advice that you might give them in terms of how to think about going about this, how to yeah. build out? I mean, you know, again, from my limited experience, but I would imagine that it's important to create a task force within government, a research, a task force, a fact-finding task force. You know, there are many filmmaking, creative industry leaders. Seek advice, have a conference, do a survey, ask the young people what they would like to do. If there was a bolster in the creative industry, ask the young people. The reason it's good for young people to be a part of this narrative is because it takes a long time. Jeffrey and I said 80 years of our lives, uh, <laughs> 80 years of our lives, you know, building um, stories. It's an industry that doesn't happen overnight. So young people can stand, stand the test of time. Build a task force, build advisory boards, look at the, the success models. Greece, a country that was almost on its knees financially, turned its country around financially by creating a tax incentive that allowed film companies to come to Greece. It bolstered tourism, bolstered employment, and they did that by taking advice from other countries that had, you know, looked at this, this area. So I would imagine that if you're a government official wondering how to bolster the creative industries right now, look at finding a task force. Like in our industry, we research everything to so much detail before we make a move. I think you made a great point. Stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Right now, if you were at the beginning of that story, think about where you'd like it to end. That's what we do in the industry. We work backwards, reverse engineer. We want the ending to have a happy moment, smiles, maybe tears of laughter. However, we have to understand the, the, the stones that we need to put in place to get there. Very simple. But in the creative industries as a policy, look at the success stories, I think. Well, Idris is referring to, so I spent a decade at the Walt Disney Company. I never actually got to meet Walt Disney. He had passed away 20 years before <laughs> I got there. But he had this amazing um, you know, legacy and heritage um, that was captured, um, uh, you know, through these um, uh, great libraries that, that had been accumulated of his works and his sayings. And um, the first is he had a, a wonderful North Star, which I reminded myself it was a quote that uh, I kept on my desk every single day. He said, I make movies for children and the child that exists in every one of us. And I thought, wow. That is just such a precise guide to mm. everything that we, we do. Mm. But what he's referring to, uh, again, another great quote of his, he said, there's no such thing as a great story without a great ending. Pretty interesting. And so that's, 
when you think about that sort of reverse engineering, what's the goal? What do you want to accomplish at the end of it? Is it a, is it a happy moment? Is it a moment of completion? Is it a tragic moment? And there's, it comes in every shape and size. It's mm. all, you know, there's, there's no limiting uh, on the types of stories that you can do. But to have a successful one, you need a, a great ending. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll give you one other lesson there, and I want to talk a little bit about the importance of technology and the role that it, it can and should and is going to play in the further democratizing of storytelling uh, around the globe. Um, but maybe well, let's go to let's 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 go to that and, yeah. and talk a little bit about what's happening today in terms of technology and the tools. You know, it used to be you had to go build these giant studios and back lots, and you know that was sort of the the you know sort of home base, the the uh, if you will the sort of lighthouse that would draw people to you to have quote production facilities. Well, everything is now digitized in it, and that's become, frankly, less important. You want yeah. to talk a little bit about it? Yeah, I think, you know, the other component to really focus in on is education, okay? So there's policy and there's education. The education component is important because it is an incubator of thought, okay? Young people really absorb tech more than any other, and I think Jeff says it, the d democratization of tech and filmmaking is happening now. You can make a film, on your phone. You can do that, you can edit it, you can add the score, you can add the graphics using apps. However, it is really important that there is um, a casing for young people to move towards, and that's where the education comes into it. Look at the universities, the technical colleges, the courses that you can implement and encourage especially when it comes to tech. Most people have a phone or a computer, and it's a good way in to the educative sector. Once you bolster that, you're actually beginning to build a workforce. And that's what I'm trying to do in Africa. Alongside the studio facilities that I'd like to do continent-wide, I would like to have an education uh, facility alongside that. And the way I'm gonna do that is with tech. So talk about pre-visualization tools and the types of things that are today because it's kind of one it's empowering it's incredibly exciting it's also a little scary yeah so the app you were showing us on the way here i was talking earlier about an app that i'd like to you know see come into fruition it's really about asking people who have to read a lot of scripts a lot of film data to be able to listen to their script rather than read it when you get a script it changes over and over again during the lifespan of the film. So I've created an app that allows you to listen to it with different voices applied to different characters, emotions, accents, cultural slants. And you can also have sector. So the prop department will listen to a type of, um, uh, of this software, which will just um, highlight the props that have changed and the stunt team will have a sector that will highlight some of the stunts that have changed. So that's just one example of innovation within the film industry, which is tech driven. Um, we're getting down here to the last two minutes and I, I, I want uh, just to take a moment and talk about what are you working on today that you're most excited about? What are you, what are you really looking forward to? You always got too much that you're doing. So, so busy. You know, I'm making a movie with an actor called John Cena uh, he's a, you know, John Cena is a wrestler. He's a fantastic guy. But the movie's called The Heads of State. Uh, he plays the American president. I play the British prime minister. And we get, <laughs> we get into a caper. Um, I'm very excited about doing that because, um, you know, leadership comes in many different forms. <laughs> So, and talk a little bit about, because one of the greatest performances of many, many great performances was this character, Luther. Yeah. Which you created, and I don't, how many people in the audience are familiar with Luther? Many? There we go, fair amount. Good yeah, it's, it's very dark. It's very dark, it's but very a movie dark. coming, so I'm super excited. You want I'm to very talk excited. just a little bit about the movie? Yeah, the movie comes out, we've been working on the television show for about 10 years, and so the natural ambition is to take it to the big screen. And so we're here with the first movie. And, um, you, know, you know, a lot of people talk about another character that begins with J and ends with B, but I'm not going to be that guy. I'm going to be John Luther. That's who I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So last is just a 
What have you done here in Dubai that's been uh, super exciting the last couple of days? Well, so I'm here, you know, actually I've been here. My wife and I were uh, nominated or awarded a Time Impact Award. Um, my wife and I have been really uh, vocal around the food crisis, the climate crisis and agriculture. Um, and so the Time Impact Awards on Sunday, we won an award. Uh, alongside Grasha Michelle, who is an incredible woman and person of our, of our, of our, our world. Yeah. Um, and I will just say for myself, I've been coming to Dubai for uh, 15 years and to the region uh, as, as long. And I don't, I cannot think of a bigger, more exciting miracle than what I have seen happen uh, uh, in this country and this city. You all see it every day. Um, I get to see it intermittently. And every time I'm here, something incredible has come, something beautiful, something that you can be proud of, something that's <laughs> iconic. This uh, Impact Award was done in this spectacular museum. I've never seen anything more magnificent Future. than that. Um, uh, he's staying out at this uh, new hotel. We hear you had a small little opening here a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Some lady, act, singer, something showed up here and uh, did a little minor performance, I think. Uh, Beyonce! Yeah! <laughs> so congratulations to all of you. Thanks for having us and Thank have you a great very conference. Much. Thank you. A fascinating conversation on why crafting stories can be one of the most powerful ways that we craft the future of our nation. With a definite highlight being Idris and Jeffrey agreeing that the story behind the making of Dubai deserves itself an Oscar.